and you go to use them and they're dead because the temperature fluctuations have drained them. Um, we're gonna give you what looks like a little camera bag when you get discharged. And inside that camera bag, you're gonna keep a set, set of batteries and a backup computer. And anytime you leave the house, you just grab that bag, put it in the car with you. And that way you've always got an extra set of batteries and a backup computer in case of an emergency. Um, now I always tell people, if you just run into a local little market and you're grabbing a gallon of milk, you don't need to carry that bag in with you. But if you're going into the mall and you're doing your Christmas shopping, you're going to be in there for a few hours. You want to take that bag with you because you don't want to be all the way down to Sears or whatever. And your car is all the way down by Macy's right. and you got to get there to get them. So just take the bag in with you. If you get, need to come to the hospital to be admitted or the emergency room or something, grab that little bag and bring it with you. Um, after you have this pump placed in your chest, we're the only bad trained hospital in this area. That's, that's amazing because I was in Methodist last week getting my sinuses done uh -huh. and they did not know what an LVAD was. No. The Le Bonner has a children's bad program, but there is no adult. We're the only adult. Right, they didn't program. even know what the LVAD was. And yeah. I was like, yeah. They're not going to know. So when, we you, had to tell when you get sick after you get this, yeah. you need to come see us. Yeah, I see that. Now, that doesn't mean if you, you're you out mowing your yard and you cut your finger or something, you need a couple of stitches. You can go to the Methodist DR and get a couple of stitches. But if it's something bad enough you think you're going to need to spend the night, you need to come here. Yeah, I see that. So you remember if anything happened to me, you need to go to Baptist Hospital because of the deal there. Now, uh, let me ask you this, Anthony. Mm -hmm. In... So I'm taking the spare battery. I'm taking taking the spare computer with me mm -hmm. in case something happens. Right. If something happens with the computer itself, and I have to change that computer out, is there a process for how do I change that computer I'm out? I'm going to show you that right now. Okay. All right. So let's say you're out out shopping, or mm -hmm. whatever, and this thing starts alarming a red heart, and you need to change out your controller. You're gonna grab your backup controller out of your bag. And then you're going to disconnect one of your power cables off, the, off of the one controller you're using. Mm -hmm. Now again, it's going to beep because you disconnect the power cord. So you're going to take that new controller and connect it up to that battery. Okay. And then... Battery lines first. You do a battery, then you're going to do what's called the drive line, the percutaneous lead. And to check, take that percutaneous lead out, you gotta open this door. Uh -huh. You gotta press this button in uh -huh. and pull the cord out at the same time. Now it's gonna start beeping because you just turned off the pump. Okay. But then you take that cord and you plug it into your new controller. Now the cord on the pump you're getting, it's got nice big bright yellow arrows pointing it out and it's got a yellow arrow on the controller. You just line those arrows straight up uh -huh. and you push it straight in. And then you close your little door. Now it's going to start alarming at first until the pump gets up to speed. Okay. But if immediately the pump starts running. Okay. Then you disconnect your last battery. So it's battery lead first, drive line second, then, then, last battery, battery. then last battery lead. Now this one's disconnected all the way. Okay. Now I just I reconnect my other power cable from my new controller. And we're going to practice this several times, not today, but I'm just showing for the first time today. So now you're on your new controller, everything's running, you're good, but this one's still lit up. Right. So you need to put it to sleep. So to put it to sleep, you press and hold this battery button down. And it's asleep. Okay. There's three different modes a controller can be in. Sleep, when nothing's off, put to it, nothing's lit up. Mm -hmm. Run, when it's connected to batteries and to a pump, mm -hmm. then it's in run mode. And if I just connect it to just power, and it can be the power module cable or a battery, it doesn't matter, it's gonna be in what's called charge mode, and it's gonna say charging or charge complete on here. Yeah, charge complete, because it's been run. Um, so run, sleep, and charge are the three different modes your controller can be in. So in charge mode, you're charging the battery that's on the inside you're charged, of it. Yeah, you're charging yeah. this emergency battery. And, and how often do, do you have to do that? The book will tell you every six months okay. to plug your backup controller up to maintain that charge. Okay. And when it's 
the completely charged, it'll say charge complete. Mm -hmm. If you're like me, I can barely remember stuff from one week to the next. Right. So I'm definitely not going to remember to do something every six months. Right. So anytime you feel like you need to charge it, just plug it up and charge it. It ain't going to hurt a thing. Yeah. You can do it once a month, once a week, once a day. It doesn't matter. Just plug it up every now and then. Make sure it says charge complete. Okay. Um, but anytime you have to switch from one controller to the other, we need to know. Right. Because um, that means that controller. And nobody, nobody's going to say, yeah, let me do that by myself. They, most people will call us and say, hey, I got this alarm going on, and we'll step you through it. Um, we're going to give you a notebook when you go home. And it's going to have different sections in it. Mm -hmm. One of those sections is on how to change out the controller step by step. Okay. It's going to tell somebody how to change your dressing step by step if they need to. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have a section in there for the paramedics if they get called out to your house. So they know what to do and what to expect. We flag your address in the 911 system. So if you do call 911, they know you have this machine and what to expect when they get there. We have them trained on what to do with your pump. Um, we also put you on a priority list with the local utility company to restore your power in case of an outage. But you got eight batteries, so four, four sets of batteries. You got 16 hours per set, 16 times four. You got a lot of battery power. So unless that power is going to be off for three, two or three days, you're going to be all right. And if things come up, come up and like that big ice storm they had, 96 or whatever it was and the power is out all around the city right. forever if the power is off long enough you can come up here and we'll recharge all your batteries for you um, you're going to be on that blood thinner we talked about cumin <coughs> once you're on that cumin you can't be eating spinach and turnip greens and stuff like that dark green leafy vegetables are high in vitamin K Vitamin K is what we give patients that are on cumin when their blood gets too thin or they start to have a bleed. So if you eat, if you're on cumin and your INR, which is what we measure to see how well that cumin is working, and in your case, we want to start you out with an INR goal of 2.5. Now, mine and his INR, we don't take cumin. Our INR is one. That's normal. So it'll take you two and a half times longer to make a blood clot than it takes us. I'm sorry yeah. to my there's a couple more out here to see and my family showed up yeah so okay yeah can... um just tell ashton the room and i'll be right there okay thank you um so when you're on that cumin and cumin is one of those medicines you can if you miss a dose you can take an extra dose the next day or you just forget about it or whatever it's one of those things that takes three to four days for it to start building up in your bloodstream so if you miss two or three days, it's gonna, it's gonna take an effect on your level in your bloodstream, and it's gonna take us two, three more days to get it built back up. Likewise, if you go and you eat you a bowl of turnip greens on Sunday, and you come and see us on Monday, your INR is gonna be back down to one because that vitamin K and them turnip greens reversed your cumin. And then we might have to put you on these little shots in your belly twice a day keep your blood thin while that level builds back up. So we just tell people to avoid those things. And in the back of that notebook, there's gonna be a whole section on cumin. And it's gonna have a list of foods that are high in vitamin K and just avoid those foods. Anything else you can eat, but those foods you need to avoid. Um, if you do start having a problem of bleeding or anything, we're gonna drop down that INR goal. If it was two and a half, we're gonna drop it down to two. And if you keep having problems, we'll drop it down to 1.8. 1.8 is typically the lowest we go. If we can't tolerate your blood being thin to 1.8, then sometimes we'll even stop the anticoagulation altogether. Um, the pump you're getting, the HeartMate 3, has never had a clot. Nobody in the world has clotted that pump off. So we don't want to be the first ones. Um, you cannot have an MRI after having one of these pumps. You've already got a pacemaker. You can't have an mm -hmm. MRI with it. You can't have one with a metal pump. Um, this the actual test you're gonna take on this device. I'm just going through it now, making sure we covered everything. And like I said, if I disconnect both these batteries right now, is that pump gonna stop? 
No. Right, because you got the emergency battery. Uh, 15 minutes. It's going to alarm and let you right. know your batteries are disconnected. But it's not going to stop. But it's going to keep running. Right. Now, if I disconnect this cord that goes to the pump motor, is the pump going to stop then? Yeah. Right, because it's not connected anymore. Right. And you'll get, a, um, you'll get a big red heart alarm. On your controller, there's a display button. Got this little TV screen looking button over here. You can mm -hmm. press it and you can see what speed your pump's running at. You can see how many liters of flow is going through your pump. You can see uh, the PI, which the PI is a difference in the pressure on the inlet and the outlet side of the pump. It's a calculation that the computer does. Your power, you can see how many watts of electricity is taken to run your pump at that speed. And then the last thing is your charge status of your emergency battery. You can also see the last six alarms that your pump logged. And to do that, you press the display button and the alarm silence button at the same time. And then you should use your display button to scroll through and see what those last six alarms are. Now, it will store 260 alarms. Now, when I say alarms, it's not necessarily an audible alarm that you hear. But like, if any, like any time you disconnect a battery and put a new battery in, it's gonna log it in the data on it as an alarm that a power cable was disconnected. Because you can actually take a battery out and put a new battery in before it ever alarms. And it, it, it didn't make any beeps, you change the battery out, but it'll let us know any little thing that went on with that pump, it's gonna let us know the last 260. So every time you come and see us, we're gonna pull up those log files and see if there was anything to be worried about. <clears throat> your power on your pump and your flow, if you start, if we're not changing any settings on your pump and all of a sudden your power starts going up and down and your flow is going up and down, that could be an indication we got a clot in the system because it takes more power to pull blood through a clot than if it's an open system. Um, if you start noticing those power fluctuation up and down stuff, I mean, it's gonna fluctuate a little bit like say if you're normally running around 5.5, it's gonna go 5.6, 5.7, 5.3, 5.4. It's gonna fluctuate little bits like that. But if you're 5.5 one week and then the next week you're running 5.8 on a consistent basis and it's gradually going up and we haven't changed anything, that's when we need to be concerned that you might be developing a clock. <coughs> that PI number that I was telling, showing you earlier, every now and then, for whatever reason, say, you had a big cough and it created a pressure on the back outflow side of that pump that the pump just qu couldn't quite push against for that brief second when you had that cough. It's gonna create a PI event. It does not alarm for a PI event. And it's normal that everybody has them every now and then. If you're having them frequently, we're gonna know it when we plug you up and we're gonna have to look and see what's going on. Why are you having all these events? Are we running the pump speed too fast? Are you dehydrated? Whatever the case may be. It's not something you need to be concerned about if it happens every now and then, but if you're checking your numbers, because once a day, you're gonna write down those numbers off that controller in that notebook we give you. But if you start noticing every time you're checking it, it's saying, you know, you see the speed drop and then come back up, speed drop, come back up, let us know, and we're gonna check it out. Um, if you go to any doctors outside of our doctors, and they want to change medications or anything, we need to know. Because the medicines that you take to help this pump work as good as it can and keep your blood thin, we need to manage those medicines. Now, if you go to a doctor because you got a cold and he puts you on an antibiotic, we need to know what antibiotic, because some of those antibiotics can affect the way other medicines work. If you go to the dentist and he says, hey, I need to take out a couple of teeth, you need to let us know because we need to come off that blood thinner so you don't bleed continuously when he pulls that tube. Um, we recommend to all our patients that they don't drive. The only reason we recommend that you don't drive is because that outflow breath for that pump is right here behind your breast pump. And if that steering wheel hits you in the chest hard enough in a wreck, it could push your stern, your chest bone in far enough it hits that outflow graph and dislodges it. Having said that, if you did it and that outflow graph came loose, 
you would be dead before you could even call 911 to say you were in a wreck. Because there's roughly four to five liters of blood going through that pump every minute. So it don't take long to empty all your blood out inside your body, outside of your vessels, and you'd be dead. Um, having to say that, if you do choose to drive, that's on you. We have you sign a piece of paper when you leave the hospital saying we recommend you should. Now, if you do, we're not going to complain about it to you. Why are you driving? We told you you shouldn't. That you know the risks. It just protects us. So if you do die in a car wreck, your family doesn't come back and sue us saying, well, you told me you could drive. No, we told them you shouldn't. But if you choose to, a lot of our patients do. I would, but I'm not telling you to drive. But by all means, if you feel you got to, then that's your choice. <clears throat> we actually recommend that you ride in the back seat because there's no steering wheels and there's no airbags gonna hit you in the chest in the back seat. Now you saw when I put that controller to sleep, it had to be disconnected from the power source and disconnected from the pump. Because if it's connected to the pump, it's gonna be running that pump on the emergency battery. If it's connected to a battery, it's gonna be charging that emergency battery. So it has to be disconnected from everything. And then you gotta hold that button down. Um, the dressing that's gonna be around where that cord comes out of your side. When we initially put the pump in, we're changing it every day. Now, once your skin grows to that cord and seals it off, we'll go to a dressing you can change every five days. Um, but anytime you're changing that dressing, if you notice any kind of, it's hot and angry, red looking around it, or it's tender to the touch when they're cleaning it, or you're having any pus coming out around it, we need to know as soon as you notice that. Because we can cure an infection when we notice it early. But if you're eventually gonna to get to where you're only seeing us here once a month. And if you let us go, let it go for a whole month and don't tell us about it, it might take us forever if we can even clear that infection. Because that, where it comes out of your skin, that cord goes all the way to that pump that's attached to your heart. So if that infection starts working its way up that cord, it's hard to get rid of it. Um, when your family's changing, we don't teach you how to change this dressing. We teach your family how to change the dressing because it's hard to change this dressing sterilely even when you're doing it on somebody else, much less standing in a mirror, holding the cord with one hand, cleaning around it, and then trying to put a dressing on it and tape it all down with one hand. It's pretty dang near impossible to do it sterile. Um, so we teach your family how to do it. When you're changing that dressing, you wanna close the door to the room you're changing it in. You don't want pets or grandkids or whoever running in and out of the room. If you got a ceiling fan in the room, you wanna turn it off. If you've got a window in the room, you want to make sure it's closed. You don't want any extra germs getting in there. When you take a shower with this pump, you want to take the shower with the dressing on. If you need to change the dressing when you come out, change it when you come out. But you don't, shower heads can grow mold and mildew inside of them. And you don't want that spraying right down where that cord comes out of your skin and introducing bacteria and stuff into that, where that cord's at. Um, that when you get to that dressing you change every five days, we have like a glad little plastic wrap kind of seal that you can put tapes to your belly over top of it and it keeps your dressing dry underneath it. Some people don't even wear it and their dressing stays dry underneath it anyway. But you don't, and if you're out working in your yard and you're getting all hot and sweaty and nasty and you, you got a five day dressing on, if you see all sweat beaded up underneath that dressing, go ahead and change it after you shower because you don't want that hot sweat just sitting there because you know how when your skin gets wet for a long period of time, mm -hmm. it, 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 it gets rough and raw and it'll release from that cord and it makes it um, more highly uh, susceptible to an infection. So if it gets nasty, just change it. We got, you're gonna have a company that's gonna send you those dressings, they'll send you more when you run out. Um, no sense in worrying about it, just change it. Um, I think I've covered everything there is to cover. Now, when you go home from the hospital, we're going to have everything with your name on it. We're going to have eight new batteries with your name on it. Those batteries are going to be fully charged and everything. If you should happen to be on this pump for three years and we need to replace your batteries, if those batteries are still wrapped in plastic, 
you need to make sure you charge them before you use them that first time. But if we know you're coming to see us and we know we're going to change your battery, we're going to go ahead and charge them for you. Because they passed a law two or three years ago that they can't have a charge in these batteries when they ship them. You know, you saw where those Samsung phones yeah. and those hoverboard things were catching on fire uh, from the, the batteries. That's the reason. So they ship them to us with no charge on them and we have to charge them up. Yeah. Well, guys, that's, that's everything that I can tell you about this equipment and everything. Um, now, like I said, get your, contact, contact your insurance, see what doctor you can see for your diabetes. Mm -hmm. 